and welcome back everyone Fnatic and their week one and one and I'm really reckless right now. Are you satisfied with the result of this first week? Um, as someone who's been in Fnatic for a long time, I'm used to 0-2 weeks, so I think it's uh, actually above expectations. Uh -huh. But I think the game yesterday felt a bit worse to lose than normally. Okay. I'm much more keen about losing games that you fight in, but in that game we couldn't really fight, so it kind of just felt a bit embarrassing, I guess, to sit there for 45 minutes and slowly lose. But in the end, as Fnatic, we've always had uh, slow starts, so I think 1-1 is perfect for us. Have you been able to identify what went wrong yesterday? In game, um, I think our draft didn't really allow us to do much later on in the game. That's ecstatic, I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we, mm, I think we had a lot of tools early game, but we didn't really have the balls, I guess, to do anything. We just kind of chilled out, and then eventually they could just play the game out much better than we could. So I think we just needed to have more. Yeah, just more balls in the early game and actually do stuff. But even then, it was a bit of a shaky draft, I would say, because it's hard to just win the game in 20 minutes and never get in a teamfight scenario or win through split pushing. I don't think it's really like the style to play here in 2020. So I think we just had the wrong idea, honestly, going into the game. And we tried to salvage as much as possible for today without actually like changing up everything, because most of the things we've actually been running over and over in practice, right? So we wanted to keep like the core of the comp the same, but change a little bit so that if we were to end up in a situation where we do not snowball early, we can still team fight later on. And I think you shouldn't neglect the fact that changing a key player as a jungler can be a strong element in the success of your team. So tell me about working with self-made. Um, I think self-made is a very strong initiative jungler, if that makes sense. I think there are a lot of junglers that play a more supportive style. Um, and there are a lot of junglers that play more of this initiative style. And I think the current meta fits more the later. So it's, uh, it's really nice to have him like kind of control the majority of the game because then the rest of us can more so focus on our own lane matchups or you know, just doing what our champions do best and then he can take care of the rest. And I think it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a good balance of the system that will help us in the long run. Yeah, he fits well with the rest of the team. A bit more about you now, because in the trailer you were saying that it should be the best year you had ever. Can you elaborate on that? Why do you have this feeling? Actually, I actually have this feeling every year. Um, I think with all the time that passes, I always get to go through new experiences. So. I feel like every year should be my best year because with everything I have been through in the past, I should be able to learn more than the players that come up nowadays. Because most of them are basically what I was in 2014. Uh, the young guy, uh, motivation comes easy, you just play 16 hours a day and you don't think twice. Um, so I think I just need to use like all these experiences to my advantage instead. And I just feel like every year should be my best year because of that. But. I was also thinking a bit about like last year. I wasn't really putting in the hours. I think I was I was working really hard, but not to the not to the extreme. And I felt like there were a lot of people in Europe that were working to the extreme, even at Worlds. So I guess this year I just kind of want to go back to that again and and try to keep up with the with the young guys. New reckless, new mindset, I guess, and you can even share your wisdom to the new guys. So that's a good thing to do for the team. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. And back to you guys. It's absolutely amazing hearing from Reckless. And thank you, Law, for a fantastic interview. Welcome back to the LEC Spring Split. We're moments away from G2 taking on SK Gaming. But I wanted to talk about Caps and Perks specifically. These are two players that have captured the imaginations of fans and viewers around the world. And these two players were once fierce enemies. I wanted to remind everyone of their rich history. Let's start with Perks. He made his debut in the LEC and he was one of the standout players that already held the moniker of EU Mids, even before qualifying for the LEC. He proved himself on the rift multiple times, domestically and becoming a feared mid laner internationally. Perks and G2 dethroned Fnatic from the top of Europe in their inaugural split and went on to win four consecutive titles from his debut. No protagonist story is exciting or interesting unless they are being challenged. And Perks needed a worthy opponent to truly level up. This is where we introduce Caps. He made his debut in the spring split of 2017. 
and Caps was able to solo kill Perks in his very first game. He went on to dominate every single opponent, and at the time, pro players were calling him Baby Faker. This was a nickname that wasn't particularly well received by people here and fans at home, but Caps would develop to be a player that would be able to stand tall in the conversation with Faker, in much the same way that Perks had earned the right to. These two players only clashed in an LEC final once. It was in spring 2018, where Caps and Fnatic obliterated Perks and G2. To me, this had to be the genesis of the idea where Perks and Carlos decided they wanted Caps wearing a G2 jersey. Fast forward to 2019, Caps is brought into the G2 roster. Perks roll swaps to the bot lane. They win the spring split in dramatic fashion, setting the record for the fastest B03 victory because there was never a chance going more in Europe ever. They win MSI. They win Summer Finals versus Fnatic in two BO5s that go all the way. And to top it all off, they make it to the World Championship Finals. So that's it. The best EU team has ever produced can now control their own future. Everyone else has to catch up. G2 can settle into their throne. And then the team roll swaps again. Perks, who is the most successful Western League of Legends player ever, back in the middle lane. This puts the second most successful Western League of Legends player ever, Caps, in the bottom lane. It is one hell of a story, and I just keep wanting more. Yesterday, Caps went deathless in his debut bot lane performance. Perks dominated on Kiana, and they are about to take on SK Gaming as the heavy, heavy favorites. The pressure is on SK to pull off a magical, massive upset. If you're interested in following the adventures of Caps and Perks as much as I am, click the link at the bottom of your screen, twitch.tv slash LEC. Be sure to follow so you will never miss an episode of the Perks and Caps story. I know Draco Sinenda won't. That was wonderful. Uh, fun fact, Quickshot couldn't see himself, so the fact that he was even remotely near where the bar was actually at was, uh, was fantastic. But I think the odds were kind of against SK before the three-minute G2 is great monologue, so it must be tough right now to be SK up there on stage. You know, not a bad start, I'd say, overall for this team, but a very different kind of pressure going up against G2. Honestly, I feel like playing against G2, it's really weird, right? Because obviously, you know, they're the best team in Europe. You want to really yep. prove yourself against them. But also, you know, G2 are probably coming into the spring split with a little bit more fun in mind. They are experimenting and all that. So in a way, I feel like this is sort of a game you let loose. You play it more like a scrim. And honestly, you try to outplay your opponents. And then once you get off to lead, you try and turn that into a one. We've seen very many times a lot of teams jump out to an early lead against G2, but not be able to close. And that's really what I look at is, yes, you can beat G2 in the early game. We've seen that. But can you actually close against them? Not many teams can say that. No. Definitely a big challenge. And especially a G2 that is feeling calm, that is feeling comfortable, that despite a roll swap is still looking incredibly powerful. Maps aside, I'm actually curious what SK Gaming looks like today because I have been keeping my eye on Gen X. I think he's been looking very good. And Crown Shot is a very solid AD carry when he's set up for success. Trick, on the other hand, a difficult first day, Ender, I know you have strong feelings, but uh, we'll see if you can turn it around. Yo, I actually, I love that you're you're talking about Trick already, because there's already some banter going on in the pregame chat. They're saying, hey, go for the full clear on Rek'Sai, man, then find the gank. And I'm, I'm just like over here seething, you know? But Trick was having a good time with it on Twitter, too. Trying to track his opponent. We'll see what he does here against Yankos this time around. Often heralded as the best jungler in Europe. Well, Lucian Akali, so far nothing too crazy. Senna gonna get banned as well. And honestly, I, I think Senna is the most ludicrously powerful champion that we've seen in a long time. Obviously, Ophelius is gonna look really strong when uh, he's got a lead, when he's set up for success, but I think Senna is just pretty much always good. Yeah, Senna, of course, with the, the range, eventually you get to a point where you can be unbeatable, or so it seems. We haven't seen a lot of teams be able to find a ton of success against that. Now, with Aphelios taken off the board as well, our eyes start looking more towards the Misfortunes as SK are hovering it. Um, of course, Zyra Khan still open and available. I know when Perk swapped to bot lane initially, he was a big fan of that Zyra Khan. They loved that pick themselves, and look at that. There you go. They do it themselves. Zyra gonna get locked in along with the Lee Sin. They don't need to pick up the Rakan quite yet. It doesn't seem like they're worried about SK taking it. SK in a tough spot, though. 
Feels like they have to take the Braum to make sure that G2 Esports don't get their hands on it to ensure that the MF can do her thing. But it seems like they have different ideas. Well, I mean, I, I would expect the Jarvan into Leona right here, and you just go for the, the massive combo, of course. We have heard different uh, pro players have different opinions on the Leona versus Rakan matchup. We expect, of course, G2 to pick that one up, whether or not Leona having that point-and-click CC is enough to beat him, or whether or not, because he has so much mobility, can she actually hit him? It's definitely a matchup you can win with a lot of skill on the side of the Rakan. Well, Mickey is one of the guys who firmly believes that Rakan has the advantage because he's the guy with all the extra mobility. He's the guy that can kind of dictate the pace of the engage. Yes, if he goes in at the wrong time, Leona punishes, but Rakan's the one who gets to decide. More often than not, and the Rakan will be locked in. It's really easy to say that, you know, your matchup is a winning matchup when you're just <laughs> the best support in the region. It's just like, that's, that's, true. that's an easy one. <laughs> that's true. But I'm not counting Limit out. I'm curious to see what they're going to put into his hands. LeBlanc and the Thresh will be taken away. Makes a lot of sense. Ooh, Nautilus as well. A lot of respect fans. They're really making sure the Cavs and Mickey are set up here. Mickey's like, yeah, I want to I play against the Leona. I want to have some fun here. You know, wow. I, I like this matchup a lot. Yeah, singling out that matchup. Yeah. At the same time, like, I'm looking at over what SK have, and I think next to this misfortune, I want them to draft something with uh, high DPS. So I'd be looking towards maybe a Cassiopeia, perhaps. Uh, the Rise, of course, open as well. I'd really like to see Gen X's hand on that, because right now you have a lot of Wombo combo. You just need to make sure that you have that consistent DPS to be able to finish off all those targets to get caught in the initial burst. Yeah, so far we have just an impossible team to fight against. The galley would be very surprising. I would be a bit concerned about that pick. I uh, mean, it would be like team circles if you went for Galio. It's, it's like, a, can you lay them down? Frost would Look call it the Venn diagram comp, but I, I love the Casio here. Yep. Uh, you know, I was talking about it earlier. I think that's going to be super good into their composition, of course, too. When Rakan comes flying at you, when Lee Sin comes flying at you, they're facing you. So you can land that Petrifying Gaze very, very easily. And now, Mickey playing with our hearts a bit. It will be the Zoe. Yes. I love it. I love it. I really like Zoe as an answer into a lot of these, you know, DPS mages just because you can outrange them, right? Like, if you're both melee range on top of each other, Cassiopeia versus Zoe, Cassiopeia is going to win every single time. But the second that Zoe is able to use walls to extend the range of her sleepy bubble, you can look to just never take a fight until you've chunked down your opponents. And that is definitely what perks must be going for this match. I love it. Yeah, we have so many pick tools on the side of G2. You've got Elise Sin with the kick. You've got the Rakan for the engage. Zoe with the sleepy trouble bubbles on the opposite side. You've got really the true definition of a Wombo combo. If they get that set up, if they can lay a Miasma down on top of Misfortune Alt, everyone on G2 Esports will die. But that setup is so hard to pull off. We've seen G2 dismantle teams that are so focused on a single thing. But the question is, can SK set the record straight? Can they put themselves up in this matchup versus G2 Esports, our final matchup of week one? You never want to limit yourself when you go against G2. Go hard in the early game. Try to go against them early on. But the crowd will always be against you here in Europe. A lot of G2 jerseys, G2 flags in the audience today. Getting ready for, getting ready for a final match. As am I. Oh, man, there's just so much that I'm ready to see. I want to see bot lanes. I want to see top lane go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Aatrox versus Orn. I know it sounds boring to you, but I'm hype on that matchup. It's everything I want to end out week one here at the LEC. And here we are. And what a way to end the week. G2 versus SK. That, that is a very long scream, sir. Can, <laughs> your lung capacity is fantastic. Have you considered being a shoutcaster? <laughs> Putting us to shame up here. I can't I'm like halfway that. through a sense, like. <gasps> <laughs> All right. I like, we got, we got yeah, the same track of mind. Yeah, yeah. All right. League of Legends, exciting game. And the first thing that I want to talk about, short of a level one, but it appears both teams are starting quite defensively. I want to talk about jungle, because as always, jungle is very important to you, Ender, as a jungle main yourself. And it's important to me because Trick is a guy that we've seen a lot of different forms of. And one of those forms is the herbivore jungler. We saw it yesterday. Crazy jungle proximity. Not a lot happening. Not a lot getting done. 
but that has to change against a team like G2. Yeah, uh, honestly, like when you when you look at these stats, your eyes just sort of like pop out of your head when you consider it was a Rek'Sai as well. A lot of early game performance that you can get on that champion. On the Jarvan, we need to see more from him. Uh, I'm going to be honest right here. You must be able to impact the game earlier on. Now, of course, against the Lee Sin, those fights can get a little bit interesting. And already, Yankos is going to start off the game by going for this late invade. And I don't think there was a ward to actually spot them out because, of course, the SK ward is inside the Dragon Pit to see if Yankos started on his own buff and then went for a wall hop here. So unless Trick is able to mirror it on the other side, that's going to be a really big loss because no red buff on Jarvan means you can't really gank. Yeah, now a forced to split map here. Yankos will move up. We're sweeping out the ward, gives him a little bit of info, is going to make Trick feel very comfortable moving in to take this red buff and EQ without worrying about needing those cooldowns for a fight. But a lot of time spent pathing over, and Yankos is now set up to gank mid or bot lane pretty much at will. And Wonder, interestingly enough, could now be the one who loses here as he has to play on the weak side. Yeah, so I was wondering if Trick was going to go for an immediate level 2 gank or if he was going to go to Krugs first because including Krugs in his first clear. Still, even though they give you less experience, they still will give you that level three mark. The Gen X in trouble. Yeah, just a good bit of poke, making sure that Perks is a bit more comfortable in the lane. Always have to respect, of course, the Cassio level two. She can't just burn through her entire mana pool to win out on a trade. Kind of puts you within the inch of death, but Trick is just going to back now. Level advantage, but definitely not a health advantage here as Yankos is going to move in. And spots that the Krugs have been taken. Mickey locked up. The follow-up is there as well. Cap's coming in. No pullback, though, as he's only level two. Now Yankos, he, he probably just walks into the enemy jungle now because he, he knows Trick is either in there and pretty low HP because he took Krugs and on Jarvan will run you relatively low, or Trick took a base. So uh, if he's able to spot him out on the ward, which will probably die before Trick passes over it, he would know for sure. But this is a good play coming through from Yankos. Also should tick over towards level three. And now Trick, not wasting any time, I want to see him go for a play bot side. Sweeper, he knows he's unspotted. Only level two, no snare gonna be there for caps. Oh, they're telegraphing it. Flash in, they're gonna be able to get the knockup. The knockup is there to follow up, but now they have no way to interrupt Trick. They're waiting, they're trying to force caps to flash so they can EQ, they can guarantee it, but he's still gonna get the first blood. Mickey, not gonna walk away with a single thing. Fantastic early gank from the side of SK. And the patience was very good there from Trick as well. He knew all he had to do was walk forward, slow with the W, and then apply the auto attack. Wait, they can this just kill him again. Risky. They're just gonna EQ, no. Oh. They're gonna back off. They're not entirely sure where Yankos is, it looks like, so they are gonna back off, but that now is Mickey oh, stuck no. up, locked down, and dead! Oh no. So that's why we say Leona counters Rakan, and I wonder if Mickey changes his mind about his opinions on this matchup after that play. Because yeah. uh, it, it starts off, right? And, and this is what I'm saying. Trick doesn't waste the EQ because that means Caps can flash. At this point, Caps should never flash, right? He, he gets hit by it anyways. You're going to go down. He should have hold, held on to that summoner spell, but very well played from SK regardless. And then this teleport, I honestly think SK are giving G2 too much credit. They're like, wait, could Yankos actually be here? Do we actually want to go in on this? But then they say, no, we just hit level three. There's no chance that G2 can actually fight it. It just, these are the types of plays that you go, okay, G2, like we know you're better than this. Oh, finishing off the camp, because it looks like Yankos did not complete the Raptors when he started on that side, maybe? Or, like, you know, yeah, yeah. So Yankos didn't finish the Raptors, okay, he okay, just counter jungled them, which is the right call in but almost all situations. And to me, that just felt, frankly, disrespectful. I don't think, like, appreciating that SK was going to be patient, putting themselves in a position where they could just get ganked like that, because they know that Trick is not on top side. Yankos is there in the jungle, taking Trick's jungle as this play yep. happens. And now he's bot side again. I like this. It's a simple strategy, but it's an effective one. Just camp the lane. And there's no flash on caps now. Mickey still has his, so they shouldn't be able to jump onto him with all of the dashes walking up. he has in, in his kit. But I, I do really like how Crown Shot and Limit are playing this um, because they're holding the minion wave in front of their tower. And because of the power that they were, uh, and they were able to get those couple of kills, now it's really hard for Caps to actually walk up and try to wave clear away and fully push it into the tower. And Yankos is here, just in case a play happens. Perks is here as well. He has a level advantage, but not Knight of Advantage. No challenging smite could be a problem, but he will just back off. Sakura is now forced out of lane. We'll get a bit more tanky, though, when he does manage to back and buy another item. Interesting. Trick spending a lot of resources to make sure this bot lane can just really yeah. do whatever it wants. Yeah, now G2 know that he's there because they saw him put down that control ward, so Mickey's just going to leave the lane. Look Perks. for a gank in mid. Has to be careful here. You can tell he's trying to bait Gen X in, but now that he's picked up a cleanse, it's a bit safer, yes. but Mickey is still level 3. Yeah, Very also, squishy. both uh, Perks and Gen X really low on mana. Perks running the heal as well, not the Ignite, so wouldn't quite have that same all-in potential uh, if they were able to try and jump on towards Gen X right there. 
But uh, now Limit with his Moby is just oh, going to try no. to run him down. I think he has to be careful. Will managed to make it out. No one quite close enough to stop him. Limit with no flash. Could not flash Shield of Daybreak to deny that exit. So one of the big uh, wins for G2 in the bottom lane. There haven't been many of them, but it's the fact that CS is still looking all right uh, for Caps so far because he did run the teleport. Obviously, he was more gankable, didn't have the combat summoner to stay alive, but uh, was able to come back into lane. And even with Mickey dying, stuck around to pick up the minions. So that will end up being all right for him. And you can see that Yanko still wants to give attention towards bot side, towards that flashless Caps with the way he's playing these invades. You know, he has the respawn timer on the red buff. Uh, as well as the Raptors too, because they had a ward over there. So they just want to make sure they split the map. Not entirely, though, which is a little bit interesting. Ooh, right as the crab responds, too. This is just excellent pathing and timing for me. I mean, but that's the thing, right? Because the, the red buff did just spawn on SK's side, and uh, they should be aware, seeing Gen X walk towards the top side of mid lane, that, you know, that's when blue buff is going to be respawning. You get the timer on that as well. So he could have played it a little bit more aggressively. But now he's going to wait until maybe Perks is able to push in that minion wave and then go for the fight. But Okay, he sees Trick moving in. He has Smite available. He's just going to move in and fight. Challenging Smite, laying down a little bit of damage, not enough energy to follow up. We'll force Trick away. Cassie is going to have to give up any kind of mid priority to come contest this buff. And G2 already pushing in bottom side means Yankos gets this buff uncontested. Really well coordinated play there. It's really interesting how long he waited, too, right? You know, maybe saying, like, is Trick actually going to be here? Then, uh, unfortunately, it, it's, when, it's when you least expect it. Wait a second. No, 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 there. no. no that's not where you want to be. They knew he was attempted. And why? I guess he was going over to do Krugs. So, no, no. This is exactly what happened. Was Trick was like, hey, Yanko's on my Krugs. Try to stop him. I'm just like, kid, don't do Krugs. They're live, bad. Live life Krug free. <laughs> Krug at it. It's fine. It's the new meta. Things are different in, in 2020. <laughs> just can't. Can't do Krugs anymore. Anywho. SK are in the meantime going to be able to grab this one. The sad news is last time we saw Herbivore Trick, was farming constantly, was everywhere, just clearing, 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 and now we're seeing uh, on J4, he's much more about kind of trying to force these aggressive plays. The downside is he's fallen super far behind in terms of jungle experience, even after taking that Herald, level four to level six. If Yankos finds him, that's a free 1v1. Yeah, Jake has not been having the greatest of times here. This is going to be one of those games where uh, not having access to catch-up experience anymore, which was, was, of course, whenever you're a level under a jungle camp, when you kill a large monster, you get 50 bonus experience, and that's a lot, right? So Trick no longer receiving that on the Season 10 patch is going to be hurting and just probably permanently behind Jankos unless we see the landscape of the game change completely, you know, over, over the coming minutes. And the thing, too, is with champions like Azaya like Lee Sin and Aatrox, even a Zoe. If you walk in and you're under leveled, yeah, your mid laner might kill them, but they might just one shot you. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter how many tank stats you build too, because just the the gold value you effectively gain from leveling up in terms oh, of much higher. armor, MR, you know, HP, all these different things, it's massive and, and can't be understated. Mickey and Caps setting up on the top side of the map. Back pinks coming out. Yankos will back off. There is a control ward in the river for SK. Limit, though, does definitely have to be careful here. Leona just as vulnerable in this play as any other champion. They're moving down. Mickey, Mickey just hit six. Going in. Timing is good there. Crown shot now in trouble. The Leona disrupting is not going to mean a whole lot because Yankos is so powerful. Doesn't even need the safeguard out. Clean tower tanking there from Mickey to make sure his jungler could get that kill. Yep, really nicely done there from G2 to layer everything just about perfectly. And at the same time, you can see some of that experience on the other side of the map. Wonder, instead of going bot lane where he didn't have a lot of vision necessarily, when he knew he was going to be on the weak side, perks. right back, but perks. Limit now trying to turn the plays back. Yeah, that's the movement speed you get from the not just the heal, but also Zoe's W pass. Whenever you use a summoner spell, able to skirt on out of there, no problem. Even against the Moby Boots Leona that was going to be charging on in very, very quickly. Now, SK, they're trying to set up this sort of sweet play on to Caps. Caps didn't get back to Mickey, though. He could have walked to Mickey, pressed the B button. That's their yeah, passive. I think he wanted the plate, though. But Trick's on the way. Just uses the ult and flash back to safety. Oh. They can't really follow up. Definitely not ideal to lose the flash there, but not going to come at any greater cost. Mickey's now on the way. They could look for the dive. Trick, of course, has also the Herald. But they're just going to back off here. 
a bit of indecision by the side of SK. Once again, giving G2, I think, the benefit of the doubt. There's no sums for caps, no mana really either. They don't want to go for the dive anyway. Yeah, I mean, Trick is still level 5, and Limit has no mana either, so uh, I can sort of see what they're going for. Of course, now they see Yankos on the Ocean Drake, and they're like, immediately, we have to drop the Herald in the top lane. We need to get something else for this. I feel like that's what Trick looks like he's going to try and path into after he finishes off. Gromp does take him to level 6 as well, so a flashless caps and boltless collapse will be vulnerable if he walks top lane by himself, which is what it appears to be right now. now Trick's there, summoning. It's going to be some extra gold. Looks like they want to split it between Crown Shot and Limit, though. Or is Limit going to back away and try to make sure this all goes over to Crown Shot? Stay in range. He's not going to stay in range. No one's going to get the tower gold. They will grab it still. I think he's going to find the knockup. Wonders in the midst of the fight. Limit will get taken down here. That's a quick kill for the side of G2. Still a tower, though, to stop that. And Yankos is on the side as well. He has his ultimate. So Trick recalling while Crown Shot doesn't is a massive mistake. Yankos going to run him all the way down. Kicking back. Misfortune now on the way in. Mickey trying to find a way to Yankos. Will not use him as a bridge to dive any further. The TP used bot lane from Caps to deny the push coming in from the Orn. And G2 just want to grab a tower play here. It's classic G2, right? Abusing their teleport advantages. First to bring Wonder into the play, grouping up his five members in one side. Then the second they see all the members of SK Gaming, well then, Caps is now free to teleport bot lane. They lose nothing on the play, uh, whereas they were able to get that kill on towards Limit, get a lot of pressure back for themselves, and hold on to that tower. Sadly, for, for Limit and Trick, it just feels like it's been a lot of running around the map without seeing a lot of immediate results. Obviously, still 2-2 two to two in terms of the kill score, but you can't help but feel this is a very similar story to the Mad Lions game, where at any moment, G2 could start to take over. That's still a level 10 Aatrox. Yankos is coming over the wall. That is not the fight that they wanted. Gen X on the way might be enough to turn the fight back. That's going to do it. Well played there by SK. Yankos, though, may fish for this one. Is going to go in with a flash backwards from Gen X. So impressive, though. Yankos now knocked up. Can they stop him? Get the kill. Yankos is going to make it out of safety. He's burning, but it's not quite. Gen X needs to make it out of this one. He Wait. sidesteps. Gen X is so clean. Gen X, are you kidding oh. me? Oh, Yankos takes him down. A fantastic moment of movement from the side of SK, but still not enough. Oh, Gen X played that so beautifully, of course, with Petrifying Gaze now, Trick. Just has to dodge skill shots, but it's not that easy when they're going literally everywhere. Limit can come in. They're all very low. Oh, Trick. no, that's it. He's going to go oh. in. He's stunned midair, but Crown Shot's there. Yankos, that's the shutdown. That's going to be a big deal. Crown Shot with the first item already completed. Going to be snowballed to the second. Same time, I'm pretty sure Perks dropped every single auto attack. He hops over the wall the first time to try and get the empowered one. I don't think he actually lands it. Then he autos the tower when Trick is underneath. It is a one for one in the end. Caps not able to land the root onto Crown Shot right there. So this time, does he press B at the same time? He's learning. He's learning, guys. That's, Two games that's, in, that's, and he's already mastered the, the champion. The true sign of a duo <laughs> right there. Beautiful performance. All right, let's look back at this, because this looked very bad to me. This looked like flashbacks to last game when Whippo was 1v3. Yeah, but here's the thing. In the bottom lane, uh, Sakurai has Ghost Ignite with his Spellbook, so he actually can't enter this fight. He is stuck without a teleport. Thanks to that rune. Don't know if it was actually up, but then that's a really clean play there from Gen X, extending backwards to give himself time to cast the ultimate. Oh, and then see, he drops the auto. Perks drops the auto. He could have killed him right there. <laughs> so then it's Yankos that ends up right. picking the kill. And then watch it, watch it. He does it. Okay. We're fine. We I was gonna. I just wanted to flame Perks. What's incredible is Wonder's 6 0 record on Aatrox. Yeah. Not actually, that's not what I was gonna talk about. Crazy. Um, Mickey can't 1v1 <laughs> uh, a misfortune, despite what he might think. No, is. Um, I lost my train of thought. 6-0 on record, on Wonder. Yeah, that's that's what you're going to talk that's about, right? Oh, what I was going to talk about. Oh, what I was going to say is, SK came out on top in gold. Sweet. They were taking bot lane. They were yeah. making things happen in the meantime. Hey, you know, I'll give it to them. And now, and now they're setting up, and actually right now, Sakurai is roaming up through the river with that pressure he gained down Wait, bot they side. Have... They're trying to set up for this Herald, and they should be able to. They have all their cooldowns ready yeah. to go. This is the moment. G2, I don't think, should take this fight. They have to be very careful, because this is the wombo combo. They're, if they come down that ramp, yeah. They're instantly going to get dove on, and it, yeah, they can't do it, right? They, at best, they were going to look for a steal right there, but it will be Trick who picks that one up because Wonder stuck down bot side without the teleport. Now, I think SK should be able to take top lane tower without casting the Herald. Unless, no, Yanko's moving through the river. They're going on him. He flashes away. Oh, no, that was Limit Splash. He just Limit hopped splash. away. He hopped away. Worth. And you got to wonder if nerves start to set in for SK because they're doing... Well, their carries are doing fine. The Orn has been farming for a long time. It doesn't they're not behind G2 at all. So you have to wonder if they're just a bit too eager to try and force these plays. Oh, but now it's gonna be an explosion of gold for G2. They just get two towers right there. 
SK still have that Herald, so their goal should be to use that to try and break the mid lane tower in the next few minutes. The most valuable one on the map for sure. But a lot of good news for G2, not just the two towers they picked up, but also for a Zoe player, I understand how frustrating it can be to play on the Infernal map when all of a sudden you lose all your walls, you lose a lot of That's rushes, true. or the Ocean map when all of a sudden there's all these honey fruits around, you can keep yourself high HP. Well, we got an Ocean Drake first, we got an Infernal Drake second, that means we're either on a cloud map or we're on a mountain map. So Both of which are infuriating. To yeah, Zoe. so Zoe loves it. The, the mountain map especially, you get all those extra walls you can play with especially when we get later into team fights and sometimes players don't necessarily line up uh, against the conventional walls. As soon as one moves into your jungle, you have a lot more to work with. It's interesting too, because I just feel like we've been seeing G2 kind of ramp up yesterday's early game. Uh, I'll be honest, was a bit, it's a bit abysmal. <laughs> Negative 2.5K, they've been keeping it a lot closer this time around, but still I feel like we're not seeing dominance from start to finish the way we saw in Fnatic versus Misfits earlier, it feels like G2 are slowly winning, winning incrementally, but it's not quite the massive displays of dominance that we're used to seeing from this yeah. team. And I, I don't think anyone really expected, right, that in week number one, as Yankos looks for this massive Ooh. flank, massive Q coming Ooh. in. Trick now kicked back, a stun's there, but the entire team fight is disjointed. Yankos off to the backside, meanwhile, Mickey and Caps are finding kills. SK have split and instantly lost the fight. Two for nothing in favor of G2. That was brutal. <laughs> Gen X was trying to go for the 1v2. Just got jumped on by both Caps and Mickey. Had absolutely no chance right there. And frankly, SK weren't able to use their big ultimates in the fight. Oh, they weren't no. able to find that combo. Perks lining up. He took a flash. He's not going to commit to it. Has a stolen flash. Can't make it out, but is still waiting. and still biding his time. Wonder could come over the wall. The team commits for this. They're just going to go down. Sleepy Trump Bubble is going to proc and instantly limit dies. You can't catch Zoe. Come on. She got the flash. Oh. No. <laughs> The whole time two caps are running top lane, it's like, I've watched Perks play bot lane before. I know you're supposed to go side <laughs> lane what and I farm. Do? <laughs> well, the rest of the team is getting kills. This is the fight one more time because, again, at the start, it's SK thinking, hey, we're grouped up, this is a good fight, but this double flank from G2 is brutal. And then Gen X is stuck up here as Mickey hops over the wall, so he gets instantly CC'd up without anyone to protect him. The fight just went completely wrong for them, and I think that that's something they need to investigate, especially playing against a player like Mickey. Like a team like G2, these guys are always going to try and jump at you from the fog pool. And it's also very hard to ward for Rakan. He has so much mobility when you count the opportunity, of course, the movement speed from the ultimate, in addition to leaping to an ally and then leaping on top of you. It's hard to completely ward him out. Ouch. Big damage. Mickey, oh. though, suddenly caught in the middle of the enemy team, but it might not matter because now everyone is getting taken down. Trick trying to run for the hills. Yanko's going to pitch for the kill. The knockup, though, going to stop him. Trick now still running. Trick still alive. Limit will go down. Another kill going down, burning from the red smite. A double kill for Yankos, and SK are quickly running out of options. Yeah, Perks just waiting. Look for some pot shots underneath the tower. Big. Not that big damage. I, I saw Zoe Q. I thought it was going to yeah, be big damage, yeah. and then it's Orn There's MR. with one MR item. But Gen X. Gen X. Yeah, fishing for the 1v1. You could definitely have the 1v1, but sadly, too many members of G2 nearby. So cannot get anything done there. And G2 are going to grab another tower. We went from slight lead for SK to dead even to 3k gold lead for G2 in a matter of minutes. You know, when you talk about G2, it is always that explosive mid game people like to mention, and we are seeing it here. Dude, we're going to continue to say this throughout the split. That's a bold time for wave there. Uh, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're not going to say that. We're going to see a lot of her. There's a lot a of her. Way to clear in her caps. <laughs> Running for hills. Sakura ain't gonna sidestep there. He's now gonna try to find the knockup, but uh, a bit of embarrassment is that one will not connect limit though. This is not a good fight. On the back side. Gen X now stepping forward. G2 retreating. Perks Look at these Zoe bubbles. They're gonna go over the wall. Ooh. That's a sleepy Leona. All right, G2 are backing away. Mickey. Style points, I suppose. Recall denied there. But another trouble bubble hitting. Ooh. He's played Zoe before. Yeah. He's played her bot lane. Yeah. I remember. That was the first game, wasn't it? It was. The uh, the sniper comp with the Zoe, yep. Jace, Karthus. That was, we'll call it wholesome. Wholesome. <laughs> the zero fun for my opponent's composition. Yeah, but it's all Also known as locking in Ophelios or Senna nowadays. <laughs> That's the whole comp thing. <laughs> as long as I'm having fun, why do they need to have fun, Andrew? They don't. SK are still having a little bit of fun, though. I'll give them that. The last few team fights haven't been great. Still pretty close in gold. I don't, I don't know if fun's the word for it, but I see the thing is I'm still cautiously optimistic because once again, Gen X is a player that I've had my eye on since last year. 
I, you know, you kind of wonder if those one or two good performances he had were, were just one-offs or more consistent. His, honestly, his movement, his fights have been pretty solid individually, but G2 as a team have just been outclassing. So I wonder if we get later, if we might see some of those miracle Casio moments where you find the perfect ult to kind of turn the game back in there. Well, the thing is, for sure, this is not a game that Gen X can like 1v5, right? Like no. that, that's very apparent here. I think he does need to play very well in these fights, especially to dodge away from, you know, Yankos is going to be coming around looking for a kick. There's a level 13 wonder on the other side that Aatrox is going to be doing a whole lot of damage to. So he has to be very mindful of those. But really, I don't think it's him that's starting off a fight, right? SK need to be able to find a fight in a tight corridor. And that's that's where something like the mountain map could be very useful. Sakre, maybe looking for the fight. Definitely a tight corridor. Again, more walls for Sakre to jam his face into and get the knock up. Yeah, that was definitely how we should describe that. <laughs> you don't jam your face into walls. <laughs> I, think it's, it's, I think you misunderstand a headbutt. It's not a <laughs> face butt. It's, it's, this, it's this part. It's that part. I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily like, I think it's a little obscure, you know? The head is a is a large got a lot area. of different sides to it, you know. Five sides can't really neck butt, you know. Yeah. We'll this let, is going we'll off the, the We'll rails. let the UFC commentators know that they need a better word. <laughs> Regardless, that's what Orn does. He does the he jams his face into the wall. That one. Well, we got another game on our hands where it looks like G2 are cleanly the favorites to win. The thing that I like about this game, unlike the last Misfits vs. Fnatic game, is that SK have the tools. They've got the theoretical wombo combo that there is always that potential for a comeback. And now they've got the items too, right? I, and I'm not talking about, you know, your second item on your AD carry. I'm talking no. about the Ornn items. I'm That's talking right. about the scaling. Bam. That's what I'm looking forward to. Every time I see Infinity Edge, I get sad because in development it was called the Edge of Madness and I thought that was the sickest thing ever and now it's, I don't Bolton know. Edge. Bolt, like, Bolton Edge. Who cares? Edge of Madness. Edge it of doesn't madness really inspire so madness though. It's like 25 AD. Madness. Like, what? Never heard of an extra pickaxe? Well, the items used to be pretty cool. All right. There was a time. You just, how much of your casting is just flaming the, the, the development team? I'm not flaming the development team. <laughs> the, the items used to be pretty cool. I am cool. their advocate. I'm their advocate. I just think stats are kind of lame. It's like, oh my. Do we have any uh, terrible Ender solo queue stats that we can get up stats team? Don't show my win rate. <laughs> Mr. Stats are kind of lame. All right, G2, though, looking for the setup here, looking for the flank. Gen X has to be careful. Soccer with the ult has the potential to get something kicked off. Mickey trying to oh finally engage. We'll get multiple people now knocked down, but Crown Shots in the backside still uncontested. This is a good fight for SK. Yankos goes gold, but it might not be enough. Trick still in the back line. Gen X trying to finish off these kills. The entire fight is collapsing. Five members still strong, only a single kill so far. They have to be careful, though. Perks on the Zoe can't just chase down the entire team. Kills might be in favor of SK, but the pressure very heavily in the favor of G2, but really, Yanko's the only one suffering. Oh, flash over. The bottoms. This is going to be it. He's grounded. He should be taken out. He has an extra flash. He can now make it out to safety. Mickey, they have to be careful, but Gen X is still untouched. Cap's going to try to come in on the back side. Very much a back and forth exchange. Sakurai will find the knockup. Sleepy, though, on the Casio. The cleanse is not there. That's going to be Gen X getting taken down. All it took was one sleepy trouble bubble. Caps, does he have enough? The flag drag forward, the flash forward. Oh, crowd shot! That's the pop off play! The perks just barely gets out of there. He still has mana, though. I wonder one, if he wants to stick around. Just look for the bubbles. This fight was crazy, but it almost feels exactly how it should play out, right? SK with the initial combo. It looks good. They get the first kill, but then. Thought Perks was going to do a little bit more there. Got the extra flash. Nah, he's Ooh. good. He's good. But then as soon as the fight gets scrappy, that's where G2's comp is going to take over. We saw them win fights earlier based on really impressive flanks. But in the front to back, you have to remember this should be SK favored. It is only when you get Wonder coming in with the big life steal towards the end of the fight. Perks with that poke on the Zoe as well. That really should be turning around. We can, we can watch this one more time too because SK find this corridor to try to take the fight into. They're able to stun up Mickey a little bit at the first and they deny a ton of damage from Caps. Caps has to hit onto the front line of Trick, who has the stopwatch as well, and then flashes away. So Caps doesn't get as much DPS off in the fight as he would have liked to. But then SK say, hey, let's try and turn it around. It looks good, right? Limit flashes over the wall, catches out on towards Perks, but they aren't able to finish the kill. And that's when they realize they are way too far forward because Wonder is still full HP, and then Gen X gets hit by this bubble. Does Perks use the Orn? Well, okay, I thought for a second Perks was going to use the Orn Q to extend the range. No. 
thought that, that was gonna bubble be insane. definitely looked like a hit crown shot, but <laughs> we'll give the benefit of the doubt there. And I love the aggressive flash forward. That is moments away from securing a kill. And now SK feeling a lot more confident. Barreling down mid lane. Next Drake in a minute and 30, they can set up some vision there. And it is all flat AD for Crown Shot. That ult is going to hit hard. After that, attacking very slow. But that ult, something you have to respect. Yeah. The weird situation that SK are in now is that Sakurai would love to hand out some Ornn upgrades, you know, as soon as he gets another level under his belt. But none of his teammates are building Ornn items. Trick can't build anything because he's... Uh, He's not making much. Full tank Jarvan. Yeah, he's full in, tank uh, Jarvan. In and Gen X has uh, Leandris. He's not getting towards a Rabadons or a, a Zonias, perhaps. Those are the couple of ones you can look for the upgrade on. So even though you have access to this very powerful passive in terms of granting you those raw, exciting stats. I know you love stats, Draco. You tell me all the time, stats, stats, stats. Um, they're not going to have those. I felt a lot like a personal attack there, buddy. Yeah, well, you were trying to tell me that I was, like, flaming the balance team or something. <laughs> All right, now the fight is kicking off. That's going to oh. be a stun. Perks has now been locked up. The follow-up is there, too. Perks has to be careful. But now the Aatrox right into the back line. Crouch on Genix just food to be taken out. Oh, my God. That was a meat grinder. I said SK had the wombo combo. I was dead wrong. G2 are obliterating <laughs> SK. Perks is 1v1. And he manages to win in the end. A victory for solo queue players everywhere. <laughs> Limit deserved the 1v1 kill. He was trying so hard, but G2 just smashed SK right there. 5 for 0 Look at the damage. It's not just caps on his three item Zaya. It's also Wonder getting those massive AoE Qs onto the entirety of SK and just ripping them apart. Fantastic fight. Can't wait to watch it again. Sadly, this might just be the final nail in the Gotham because this is Dragon Soul on top of Baron, and it's the Mountain Soul too, so there will be no poking for the SK lineup before a fight. They have to all in and win if they want to come out on top. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, the Mountain Soul, yes, that is Crown Shot's entire ultimate damage. We'll just block it all. Have you never played against an MF? That's a lot I've less. I've played against MF, but right now when she dies instantly, it doesn't look good, because at the start, it does. But Mickey in the back line with the double charm, no DPS comes down. And then Aatrox Zayed just completely massacre them. They didn't stand a chance. It's all Mickey right there. It's really all Mickey to start it up and set up for the rest of the squad. Well, also Perks hit like the max long range Sleepy Trouble Bubble on the yeah, crown okay. shot. That was cool. Also good. But you know it's a good argument. We're arguing about which G2 <laughs> member carried a fight. And Look, like, they all did mistake. something. And this is where it becomes an absolute nightmare. Because the Mountain Shield, honestly, not that re relevant. I feel like that's one of the weakest Dragon Souls. But the fact that they have Baron buff and a Zoe means this Zoe is just going to keep poking. And once a single trouble bubble connects, it's very likely someone will die. This tower gonna go down very soon as well, and that means you don't get to enter into your jungle either. You don't get to enter now. Oh man. SK, we keep setting up, wait oh. for that perfect combo, but now it is Trick coming around on the back line. But Caps has flash, he has ult. Perks has flash too, so you just can't make this split. stick. Okay. What's the strat here? That is a huge knockup. Maybe that will be enough. The ulti comes over the wall. The perks flashes right out. A little bit questionable for Crown Shot. Now the TP's coming in. There's going to be an Aatrox right to the back line, but a perfect stun comes in from Gen X. Sadly, not enough. Wonder flashes in. Not afraid whatsoever as Yankos will try to finish the job, but has the overstate as well. Oh. Still laying down a bit of damage. He got he out. the wrong way. Not with the Aiden Yankos. He's still alive. G2. All five still standing. His two drop from the side of SK. How does he do it? The man is just full of courage. Yankos goes all the way under the tower to punch Gen X in the face before getting out with just a sliver. And this one's all but over. Dracos, they're just going to run it straight yeah, down this bot lane, straight down. break the base. Without the ultimates, SK can't do anything. Oh, and this is uh -oh. brutal because now Perks just gets to walk in. He gets to poke. He gets to threaten. Trouble Bubble will go a little bit long here, but G2 are going to break one tower. Mid lane being broken by Yankos. In the meantime, we're going to walk in face first. Into the waiting arms of Wonder, happy to stab pad a little bit more, but for SK, looks like this is going to be it. Going for the double inhib now. Oh, SK stuck under the fountain. That's a big Q, but half HP onto Gen X. He's relegated to go back for more HP. And now we're onto the Nexus Towers, Dracos. Just going to be breaking them down. They're going to go in. Mickey wants to get the follow-up. That's going to be one crown shot potentially next on the list. MF Vault on the way. Just a few seconds until the cooldown comes up, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The entire team are deleting him. The Sleepy Trump Bubble will connect on Trick. I think Trick is next. I think we want to do it. A farewell to arms to an old.
little brother from the G2 lineup, a double kill for Caps and another fantastic performance from G2 as they close out for the 2-0 week. It's always a fun game with G2 on the rift, and once again, early game looked like there was some competition there between G2 and SK, but you can just see a, a, a level of class in the way this squad approaches team fights. Every single player stepping up when it matters most, just the cohesion of maintaining your roster from season to season. The only team in the LEC that did it, and they looked like they were all on the same page. And this is one of the things that G2 were first kind of praised for, was the fact that all the players are incredible individually and mechanically, and the level of kind of innate understanding between this roster is so high that there's not a lot of need for communication in a team fight. Everyone understands their role, they do what they need to do, they call targets, and that's all it takes, and they play the entire team fight out. Almost like one person, like almost like five, one mind, five people. Yeah, that's often what it looks like when G2 are really popping off. It's actually fights. grabs backstage, he's like hooked up the cybernetic machine, he's just controlling all five computers. The puppet master. Is that, is that what he does? I think he does something like that. Sure. <laughs> Why not? We can, let's boost the He doesn't get paid for the drafts, right? <laughs> He gets paid for those. Nah, I just don't know. Old thing, but a good one. Checks out. And uh, it's time. Key up player of the game, folks. You can see it on your screen. It is Yankos, Perks, or Mickey. Now, for this game, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Mickey, and you're right. You're right. The yeah, con was there. Now, did he run it down in the early game? Yes, but when it mattered most, did he hard carry most of the team fights? Also, absolutely yes. Should I influence the vote? No, probably a conflict of interest. But you're here, you're listening. I'm going to tell you what I think, and it's Mickey X. I appreciate that, Drake. So I'm going to log on to Twitter right now, and I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for Mickey. You you, go. You've swayed me. You've anchored me. There's nothing you can do. Now Perfect. Mickey's won. I love it. Maybe we should try to bias more of these votes. Right? Also, no. <laughs> also, 30-minute game. Maybe day one was a fluke. Maybe it's not a 40-minute game season. We had a we had a, a long OG game. We had a 20-minute Fnatic game, and a four, we kind of rounded out. I think we yeah. ended an average of 30 for our games specifically. Right. I think we're just the good luck charm. But really, I think we're also just seeing longer games. Yes, there were some changes to the game that have slowed it down. But also, remember, these are all brand new rosters except for G2. So you can definitely expect to see teams maybe working on trying to close it out, taking a little bit longer to actually make that happen. That just sort of comes with a new season. Well, you asked a question about whether or not G2 is entirely run by Grabs as sort of a shadowy puppet master. And the good news is Laura is standing by with an interview with Grabs. Who will, please don't ask that question. We are please ask the meeting. question. <laughs> I won't ask the question. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Grabs, for joining me. 2-0 week. I guess that was expected from you guys? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, we are expecting growing pains in the beginning. But our schedule was not the hardest this week without being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So we can't expect it to zero. Um, I think overall we can be happy with the games, even though they didn't look as clean as last year, but of course it's a new roster. Yeah, you're improving and yet you did the role swap. We'll talk about this a bit later in the interview, but I want to know, tell me about the mindset of G2 coming back in the LEC as world's finalists. Uh, the mindset is pretty much that we still believe we are kind of heads and shoulders above the competition and you want to be that. So working towards that and ultimately you want to win worlds still. Um, and we learned a lot from last year about how we should structure the entire year. Because even though we felt we had like off weeks, we didn't scrim and we had more free time, it still didn't prevent the burnout in the end. So we kind of had to find new structures and I think we have a better idea now how to approach the whole year. Can you tell me a bit more about this? What did you learn as a coach personally after the 3-0? Um, I mean, it's really hard to find the balance between trying to improve during the worlds and t still being relaxed. Um, because of training for six weeks and only for Worlds and then suddenly um, towards the end the energy goes out. So I think just having a healthy environment in terms of fitness and also just allowing yourself not to only practice and say, okay guys, we're in Paris now one week before Worlds, but let's go and visit Disneyland together or something um, to like get out of the hotel. Okay, and I know that the coaching staff changed, but we'll talk about it a bit later. But I want to know, fast forward 2020, we know that Caps and Perks Worlds swapped. What do you think about it? as we had two games on stage to see it? Um, I think they're just very similar. So in the end, I don't think um, the end product will be different. I think we have a chance to be better than before. Um, we expect ourselves to lose some games because of course both have to go back to the roles or Caps has to learn how to be in mid, especially as a Freeman team in mid, in mid game could be um, a bit rough for him. It was the same for Perks as well in the beginning, so we allow ourselves the time. And I think in the end, we're gonna be the same G2 like last year. 
Who had the idea of doing that? Uh, I don't think who began, because both were kind of like bickering back and forth the entire year, like, ah, you played it so bad, I could play it better, and I know you're playing it bad. And then I think they just said, like, I could do it better, I can do it better, okay, let's swap, okay. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like free-flowing, and um, we also said that if it should not work out, which can happen, we can always go back. And both like the challenge, and they like to try new things, um, so both are happier, and the entire team happier. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask, because when you're another team, it can be confusing, and you're like, okay, Am I going to play against Perks? Am I going to play against Cavs? So is it going to be a permanent thing or you just want to play with teams and what they shouldn't expect from you guys? The plan is for it to be permanent for the year. And I think we as a team still define ourselves how we play pressure. Like it doesn't matter who's Smith, it doesn't matter who's Bolt. As long as we actually play together and um, towards objectives, which in the beginning right now, the other game is pretty bad. In the first two games, um, it's growing pains, but ultimately I don't think it affects anybody and we could swap whenever. But um, for now, we want to give Caps the time to learn um, bot lane and purpose to go back in mid. Mm, and I, I think he can help him because he used to be mid laner who swapped bot lanes, so I guess they can help each other in this process. But now last question for you. I recall last year you were, you were praising the coaching staff, especially Duffman, but I know you added some more members to the coaching staff. Can you tell me a bit more about this? Um, so pretty much Stefan and me were like a two-man army and um, it was kind of funny to see, compare ourselves to other coaching staffs when suddenly 10 people rock up and we're like, there's two and like, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, again, I, I, flee, I only press with Duffman, um, by far the best um, assistant in the West, I would say. I don't know about Korean and Chinese um, assistant coaches. But we want to add something more to the um, players, for example, some data work that can be done, um, just general structure that helps Stefan to focus on something else. Um, so just want to bolster our, our strength there and allow him, like Duffman, to actually do stuff he's better at instead of everything. Um, I mean, everything in terms of scouting and data work. Um, he showed a lot there. So mainly for him, okay. that's the whole um, coaching staff now. All right. Well, best team and best duo to make the best work with G2. I hope. Thank you very much for the insights. Thanks for and having congrats me. on the first week. And to wrap up this first week of the LEC, we're going to send it back to PGL. Take it away, Shucks.